Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day and had a great Memorial Day weekend. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Tuesday, May 26th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast every week for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So this week, we do have a few products that were approved with new indications. We have updates for you from the FDA on a new indication for Pomalast for AIDS-related Kaposi sarcoma and approval of Kinmobi to treat off episodes in Parkinson's disease. And also this week, approval of the combination Opdivo and Yervoy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer with PD-L1 expression. Let's get right into it with the first one. The FDA on Friday expanded the indication of already marketed pomalidomide, which goes by brand name Pomalast, for adult patients with AIDS-related Kaposi sarcoma, whose disease has become resistant to highly active antiretroviral therapy, or in patients with Kaposi sarcoma who are HIV negative. Patients with AIDS-related Kaposi sarcoma should continue their antiretroviral therapy for their HIV, as recommended by their physician. Pomalast was first approved by the FDA in February of 2013 for advanced multiple myeloma. Kaposi sarcoma is a rare form of cancer that usually presents as skin lesions, but can also develop in several other areas of the body including the lungs, lymph nodes, and digestive system. The disease occurs at a rate of about six cases per million people each year in the U.S., and mostly affects people who are immune-compromised. This oral therapy is the first new treatment option available for those with Kaposi sarcoma in more than 20 years. This indication is approved under accelerated approval based on overall response rate. Continued approval for this indication may be contingent upon verification and description of clinical benefit in a confirmatory trial, the FDA noted. Efficacy was investigated in the study, which was an open-label, single-arm clinical trial conducted by the National Cancer Institute. A total of 28 patients, 18 were HIV positive and 10 were HIV negative, received 5 mg of pomalast orally once daily on days 1 through 21 of each 28-day cycle, until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. All HIV-positive patients continued highly active antiretroviral therapy. The primary endpoint of the study was overall response rate and other response criteria as assessed by investigators according to the AIDS Clinical Trial Group Oncology Committee response criteria for Carposi sarcoma. For all patients, the overall response rate was 71%, with 14% of patients achieving complete response and 57% of patients achieving a partial response. The median duration of response for all patients was 12 months, and additionally, half of patients who responded maintained a response at more than 12 months with Pomalast. The most common adverse reactions were decreased absolute neutrophil count or by blood cells, elevated creatinine or glucose, rash, constipation, fatigue, decreased hemoglobin, platelets, phosphate, albumin, or calcium, increased ALT, nausea, and diarrhea. As described in the box warning of the prescribing information, pomalas can cause fetal harm and is contraindicated in females who are pregnant. Pomalas is only available through the restricted distribution program, Pomalast REMS. Deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, and stroke can occur in patients treated with pomalast, and thromboprophylaxis is recommended. The FDA also approved a new apomorphine product, which goes by brand name Kinmobi, as an on-demand sublingual treatment for off episodes, or times when medication wears off, in people with Parkinson's disease. 
Kinmobi is an apomorphine film that is placed under the tongue when patients start experiencing a worsening of their symptoms. It can be taken up to five times a day, and dose ranges from 10 mg to 30 mg. The manufacturer, Synovion, expects it to become available to patients in the U.S. by September. Levodopa is considered the gold standard for Parkinson's treatment, but several years after starting the medication, most patients begin experiencing fluctuations in their motor symptoms caused by faster wearing off of the treatment's effects. These off episodes can happen at any time of the day, and most patients experience more than one episode each day. Kinmobi's active ingredient, apomorphine, can cross the blood-brain barrier, which is a semipermeable membrane that protects the brain from the external environment and mimic the effects of dopamine in the brain. As such, it can counteract the loss of dopamine-producing neurons in the brain, which is a hallmark of Parkinson's. Apokine is an approved apomorphine injection treatment for Parkinson's patients experiencing off-episodes. Its efficacy in easing motor symptoms is established, but it can pose significant challenges to patients, such as the need for an under-the-skin injection, an initial dose titration that should be supervised in a clinic, and common side effects such as nausea and injection site complications. These challenges are thought to have limited the product's use. Kinmobi is expected to provide an easier mode of administration and is expected to eliminate more slowly from the body, helping to ease the feeling of nausea caused by abrupt reductions in apomorphine blood levels. Kinmobi's approval was based on data from a Phase three study, in which the oral medication was compared to placebo as an on-demand treatment of motor symptoms during off-periods. The trial included 109 patients who had at least two hours of total off-periods per day, including well-defined morning-off episodes, despite being responsive to levodopa treatment. In an initial open-label phase, all enrolled were given increasing doses of Kinmobi until an optimal dose was identified. Patients were then randomly assigned to either Kinmobi or placebo, taken to treat up to five off-episodes throughout the day for 12 weeks. All continued to receive their stable anti-Parkinsonian medications. Results showed that patients using Kinmobi experienced an 11.1 point reduction in their MDS-UPDRS scores at week 12, while those on placebo showed reductions of 3.5 points. MDS-UPDRS is a standard scoring tool for Parkinson's symptoms. Kinmobi also helped patients achieve full control of their motor symptoms, a full on response within 3 minutes at week 12 compared with 14% of those given a placebo. The treatment was generally well tolerated, with most treatment-related side effects being mild to moderate and reversible after its use was stopped. The most common were nausea, sleepiness, and dizziness. One person with a known cardiac risk factor who was treated with Kinmobi died due to heart failure. And one final note on this, the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research supported early clinical development of Kinmobi. And finally this week, the FDA approved the combination of nivolumab, which goes by brand name Opdivo, plus ipilimumab, which goes by brand name Yervoy, as first-line treatment for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer whose tumors express PDL1, as determined by an FDA-approved test, with no epidermal growth factor receptor or anaplastic lymphoma kinase genomic tumor aberrations. Efficacy was investigated in the Checkmate 227 trial, which was a randomized open-label multi-part trial in patients with metastatic or recurrent non-small cell lung cancer and no prior anti-cancer therapy. In the trial, 793 patients with pdl one tumor expression were randomized to receive either the combination of Opdivo plus Yervoy or platinum-based doublet chemotherapy. 
The trial demonstrated a significant improvement in overall survival for patients with PDL1 tumor expression receiving Abdebo plus Yervoy compared to those treated with platinum based chemotherapy. Median overall survival was 17.1 months versus 14.9 months, respectively. Median progression free survival was 5.1 months in the Abdevo plus Yervoy arm and 5.6 months in the platinum based doublet chemotherapy arm. Confirmed overall response rate was 36% and 30% respectively. Median response duration was 23 months in the Abdevo plus Yervoy group and 6.2 months in the platinum based chemotherapy arm. The most common adverse reactions in patients receiving the combination were fatigue, rash, decreased appetite, musculoskeletal pain, diarrhea, dyspnea, cough, and nausea. The recommended dose for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer are Obdivo 3 mg per kilogram every 2 weeks and Yervoy 1 mg per kilogram every 6 weeks until disease progression, unacceptable toxicity, or up to two years in patients with disease progression. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.